Hey folks, it's Carrie with Bootstrap Farmer and we're out here at Paris Natural Farms and as you can tell, they're in the process of transitioning from their summer crops to their winter crops. Today we're going to talk about what professional farmers do to grow the best lettuce and we're going to show you how you can do it at home too. So to the average consumer, when they think about lettuce, they're thinking about either romaine or iceberg. But when a farmer is selecting their varieties for what they're gonna grow, they're looking for the different varieties that are gonna thrive in the different time of year that they're working. So what I mean by that is this Tropicana. This is a great one for the colder mornings, but it's tolerant to the heat, so it can last for those hotter summer days here in Texas. So when you start your succession planting, you can start to incorporate other varieties as your season begins to change. So the other thing about consumers is they like a good spring mix. If you go to any store, you can go and look at boxes and you can tell that there's all these different kinds of lettuces. As farmers, as growers, we know what all of these are called. Inside Salanova Green, Inside Salanova Red, the Tropicana. We have some spinach over here, which is another great succession plant that falls pretty close to lettuce in the way that it grows. So as we continue to harvest every single week, we're going to want to plant seeds because when these come out, we want nice, big, full, healthy rooted transplants to go into the ground right as these come up. So as we harvest this conveyor belt of lettuce, we're pulling this up, this is still growing, we're putting new back. So by the time this row is harvested, we fed our community or we fed our household every single week a few heads and then we're starting over round and round we go until the next summer pops up. Let's talk about your soil prep. Of course, like always, we want you to go ahead and get a soil test before the start of each season. So as the tomatoes or the peppers or the cucumbers or whatever you have growing in either a very small garden or in a big three bay gutter connect greenhouse like this, as those nutrients are uptaken by the different crops, you know what to replenish and replace or amend your soil and I hope at what rate. The other thing that we want to consider is that we want a nice, loose, well-drained soil. Lettuce is a quicker crop at 30 to 45 days, maybe 55 days if you're doing a taller romaine. But as we're pulling transplants out of here, those roots are going to need room to grow in loose soil as those roots are developing. So the other thing you're going to want is a nice, loose, well-draining soil. As the lettuce is coming out of your propagation trays, it's a fast-growing crop. It's a, it's a 30 to 55 day crop, depending on what type of greens you're doing. Those roots, whenever they come out of propagation, are gonna hit this soil when it's properly amended, and those roots are just gonna fire out of there real quick. And when that happens, any rocks or any impediments that you have are gonna restrict the growth of the plant. So let's make sure that we're working the soil nice and even, and that we're amending it properly. A successful lettuce crop is gonna be determined by the work that you do at the start of the season. We've already talked about amending your soil and your soil prep. And your next step is gonna be preparing your irrigation. As you can see, the irrigation lines are going along with the lettuce. When you're getting ready to prevent damaging your plants, you wanna have this line down before you're planting and plant along the lines. So one thing that professional farmers do that home gardeners may want to employ is the fact that you need two different types of irrigation ideally. So one, when we have a small transplant, that means we have a small root system. So we already talked about laying down the irrigation lines, but if we relied solely on that, there is a chance that because the root system is so small, the drip irrigation may not reach the roots properly and that plant could die before it even has a chance to start. So what market farmers tend to do is also use an overhead spray to cover the entire surface area of the plant. That way the roots are guaranteed to get water. As the plants grow out, they will turn off the overhead irrigation and rely on the drip irrigation to use less water to keep the paths dry and to make sure that each single plant is getting the proper amount of irrigation. Once the plant begins to get established and the root zones are bigger, we can transition into the drip irrigation that's going to then properly water the plants. We can then turn off the overhead irrigation to save water and to keep the pathways dry. If you're in a home garden situation, we still like the fact that you can use something like a raised bed kit watering system, and you can take a look at that in the link above. But for your overhead, if you're not growing in a high tunnel or something like this, and you don't have a way to have an overhead sprinkler, a daily shower with a wand, or perhaps a rotating sprinkler in or next to the bed is going to give you that overhead coverage that you may need. Once your lettuce is planted, every few weeks, they're gonna want something to eat. A well-balanced fertilizer high in nitrogen will help promote that leafy growth. 
So from a professional farmer standpoint, one of the tips you can do is make sure that when you're ordering your seeds and you're preparing your soil is that you're also getting enough nutrients to last you the full season. If you're buying in bulk, you're saving a little bit of money and you never have to worry about running out. Now we're going to talk about succession planting. And again, I mentioned earlier is to think about these rows as conveyor belts. Now in a home garden, things may look a little different and let's take a look at that. So for a lot of home growers, we're growing in either a small box or a small container. And in this example, I'm going to talk about a four foot by four foot container. It's pretty standard for family size. Lettuce likes about eight inches on center to be able to grow. And there's a couple of different configurations you can use to plant out. One is putting those lettuce on the center points of that eight inch grid that you could put out with some string or some sticks as you're first laying it out. But what that gives you is a diagonal row that while it does give you room to plant radishes and carrots and companion crops along the way, it's not giving you like all of the benefits that you would typically find in a nice row like a farmer has. So if we're just talking about lettuce production, let's figure out a way to better manage that space. So in this slide, we're talking about that eight inch grid, but we're pushing all of the lettuce closer to the edges. And instead of 13 heads of lettuce planted on the diagonal, we can actually get 20 heads of lettuce if we push those out and still have that eight inch spacing. Less room for companion crops, but we have more lettuce that we can count on week after week. So as a farmer, we're taking a look at this high tunnel. We have peppers, we have cucumbers, we have tomatoes going on in here. And what that's giving us is we're extending our season, we're using those shoulder seasons, we're still able to pull summer crops out as we're transitioning into the succession planting of lettuce. So in a week from now, we're gonna take out this row, more lettuce. Spinach has already started. We're going to go ahead and in like in the last video, we did talk about in October, September, that we can still plant cucumbers up to the last frost date. And that's what's going on here. So it's a great example of the lessons we learned in this video up above. So as these tomatoes come out, we're going to go kale, broccoli, all to get different kinds of lettuce, maybe some red vein sorrel. But the point is we're transitioning every single week. Something is coming out of this. It's either going to your dinner plate, it's going to the farmer's market, and you're going to have this continual, again, conveyor belt. I want you to think about that conveyor belt over and over because every single time this comes out, you have the opportunity to replant. You're not giving weeds an opportunity to come in. You're putting something back in that soil that's going to feed you, your family, or your community. So back to the homeowner kind of way of thinking about this. If we're going to take the farmer efficiencies, what you don't want to do is plant everything all at once. And that's, that's pretty counterintuitive. We all get excited. We start our seeds and we want to go. And so what Bootstrap Farmer has done is we take the same efficiencies in a cell tray or in an air prune tray where people are starting a lot of seeds in mass because in this situation, we had to plant a few dozen heads of lettuce per row every single week. And if it was a bigger tunnel, we may plant a few hundred. And week after week, that's what those cell trays are for. But let's scale that down for a homeowner. Let's go back to that four by four box. You don't wanna plant all that all at once because what are you gonna do? Eat 20 heads of lettuce at one time, it doesn't make any sense. Just like if we know what our market is going to bear, we're not going to take a few hundred heads of lettuce to the farmer's market in one week, throw half of that away, and then in eight weeks, hey, here's another 200 heads of lettuce. That's not a conveyor belt like we're trying to get to. So if we're thinking about lettuce, typically it takes a head of lettuce six to eight weeks from seed to be able to harvest. Depends on the variety and you wanna check your seed packages, but if we're looking at this example of 20 heads per box, we're going to plant three this week, three next week, three the next week, and you could do four, you could do five, you could tailor it to your needs and the size of your family or the size of the community, whatever you're trying to do. But the point is, by the time these heads of lettuce get planted and grow and you're harvesting three and then you're making room for another three, that's that conveyor belt that you get all throughout the season. And that's what pro farmers do to have a nice steady supply from the time they start bringing heads of lettuce to the market to the time that season ends. As we're coming into those shoulder seasons, the intensity from the heat is going to get less and less during the day. So we're gonna start taking the shade cloth off. As the amount of available sunlight starts to reduce, we're gonna have more opportunities for frost to come in. If you're not in a hoop house, you're gonna to wanna to start looking at some low tunnels that you can put your frost blanket on so that you can tailor that to your needs during those days. And back to that four by four homeowner example, that's just a couple of hoops with some frost blanket put over. So if you click on the link here, you can see our four part frost blanket playlist. So you can see how to extend that season. With cold tolerant varieties and that frost blanket protection, you can have fresh leafy greens all year round. 
One of the great things about growing in the winter time and at these seasonal extensions is the reduction of pest pressure. It gets colder, pests go to hibernate, they kind of go away, but you still want to be diligent in checking for aphids, white flies, things like that. The colder it gets, the sweeter this lettuce becomes, and it's just like a dessert for those little buggers. So having some organic biological controls early on in the season using things like insect netting and physical barriers like keeping your doors shut are all ways you can take care of your pest and make sure you have the best crops to eat without using sprays. A well-known gardening statement is the best fertilizer is a gardener's shadow. The fact that a gardener or a farmer is checking their crops multiple times a day ensures that they're seeing any irrigation leaks, pests, or any other problems that could arise. So they're also keeping an eye on the different areas of the garden so they can tell if one side is doing better than the other what they need to make adjustments on. They're also looking at parts of the garden that are doing better than others. This could show an issue with a hot spot or shade or some irrigation issues. The point of this is growing your own food can be very beneficial and very rewarding. So keeping an eye on it can help with that process. So my last tip, and the one I think is actually the most important, is to plant crops your family is going to eat. There's no purpose of doing any of this and planting lettuce if your family is never going to eat it. So just like a market farmer is going to evaluate what their clients are going to want and not want and plan and plant accordingly so they can actually make a sale, there's no point of going through all the soil prep and soil test and selecting the seeds and getting the fertilizer and setting up your irrigation and all of the stuff that makes this head of lettuce possible if your family's not going to eat it. So what I always want you to think about is where's your crop going to go? Plan your meals accordingly. Are you going to use it for salads? Are you going to use it for wraps or sandwiches? And make sure that if you harvest this lettuce that all that labor and love that you put into it is actually going to be in use. So if you like this video, we have a lot more tips on things to plant throughout the season coming up. You can look at some of our past videos on seasonal extensions and how to use those frost blankets and how to make your own low covers. And we would really like it if you would tell us below what you're going to plant this season. So maybe that can help us make videos to help you along the way as you go. So thank you for watching, like and subscribe and do all those things that really helps us out and it helps other farmers find us. We'll see you next time.